There we are. There we are. And here we are. Here we are. Hi. 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 Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Yay. I'm so happy to be back with you. Uh, by popular demand, we're just going to do questions and answers the entire hour. We may go longer than that if there are good questions. I don't know. Uh, there's probably going to be an appearance later in this video. Hey. Maybe. With, yes. By Baby Beckett. Yeah, maybe. Star of Beckett Did It on Instagram. If you don't follow his Instagram, it's <laughs> Beckett Did It. Because he did. He did it four times today, as a matter of fact. Five. He pooped five I times. I think there's something in my teeth. <laughs> what do you got in your teeth? I don't know. Hang on a minute. I'll do this off screen because that's rude. If you're watching this on Facebook, feel free to start a watch party because we're going to try to answer so many questions that could help a friend or a family member out on their journey back to good health. Remember when we all used to have good health when we were young and full of energy? I don't know. I think my health is better than even when I was young. Right. And you you journeyed back. You went through your rough time. You're, you're being lost in the wilderness. And now you're back to good health. Lost in the wilderness. Yeah. The That's wilderness of chronic disease. And it's time for all of us to, to join together and journey out of the wilderness of chronic disease back to good health. It's possible. It's doable. So share this video, start a watch party, whatever you need to do. You can tag a friend in the comments and help us to help them because I want everybody to be healthy. Wouldn't that be awesome? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you didn't watch the YouTube live earlier, Dr. Barry and Dr. Jason Fung did an excellent Facebook Live, YouTube live is on both, right? Yeah, and on Twitter as well. On Periscope. Periscope, but, but, yeah. but it's on Twitter yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, uh, Dr. Fung and I, bro, we brought it. Uh, Dr. Fung dropped the mic so many times, I think he broke it. It was a great, yeah. great interview, tons of great information about cancer, cancer prevention, uh, and I believe even cancer treatment. And uh, so that's a great video if you know anyone who's afraid of cancer, who's had cancer in the past, who has a family member with cancer, or who has a family history of cancer, you need to go check that video out. And share it. Yeah, heck yeah, share yeah. it. I mean, uh, Jason Fung is a fount of knowledge. He is a public resource. And although he lives in Canada, uh, he trained in the United States. He is at heart both an American and a Canadian. And I mean, you, you can't do better than to listen to his words of wisdom. Totally uh, yeah, for totally good, for real. It was like I listened to him yap all the time, but I, this time I got to listen to Dr. Fung yeah. talk. Yeah, I tried my it best. Was, it was really, really good. So. Didn't I? I tried. You to did shut good. up. You did I good. I tried to shut up and let the man talk. You did good, kid. Yeah, yeah, it was a great interview. I so really uh, before we get into the questions, let us know where you're watching from, where you are. Are you are you close to Nashville? Are you really far away from Nashville? We like to know. It's yes. really cool to see where you guys are watching from. Where are you watching from right now? <clears throat> I want to see. We had, me and Jason had people from Norway, Australia, Sweden, um, We've got coast, Philippines. Costa Rica, right, Alaska. Love Costa Rica. South Jersey, nice. New Zealand. What's nice. up, New Zealand? Arizona. Excellent. Fort Myers, Dallas. We got a few from Fort Myers. That's cool. Yeah, and so let's answer a bunch of questions, yeah. and and that's our job. And your job is to help us get this information out to as many people who need it as possible because it's important. Yeah. What else? Any housekeeping? Anything we need to cover? Well, if you want to have live on the the edge. If you want to, if you want to take a risk, take a take, risk, take a chance. I have posted my keto fied Chex Mix party mix recipe over on my YouTube channel. Nisha loves it. Fair warning, okay. I even put it at the beginning of my recipe video. This will make you overeat. It is a dangerous trek to go down if you are sensitive to peanuts or not peanuts, just nuts in general, like I am. Yeah. Just you know. Or if you love them. Yeah. So yeah. it is a treat. So if you're willing to take the risk, it is delicious. Yeah, Nuts are one of the few keto foods I will absolutely overeat. And I yeah. love how you put the disclaimer up front. This is an, this is an occasional feast. This is for the holidays. This yeah. is not for daily consumption. Uh, you know, Chex Mix, they'd love it if you ate it every day. Right. But at least you're honest. You're like, this is delicious and divine, it but it is have, not for every day. Well, it doesn't have Chex Mix in it. It's, right. it's nuts and bacon and mm. cheese crisps oh. that I make. It's just really good. <laughs> so like I good. said... Make make it a small portion or have enough people where it gets 
put into small portions because yes. if you if not you'll be like just a few yeah. another handful just another yeah. handful two or three times a year yeah thanks not it, it, it's that good it's dangerous it's keto crack it's dangerous it's, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, guys, drop your questions. Let get let's get going. Hey, Amanda from Kentucky, Dawn from Illinois, Elizabeth from South Carolina. If you have questions about keto, low carb, banting, uh, carnivore, ketovore, fasting, uh, any of any of those, those are fair game tonight. There's so many people out there who are hungry for this knowledge. So don't be shy. Ask your question. Try to keep your question as short as you can while keeping it intelligible. Uh, but but ask your questions. Please don't be shy. If you've never commented on one of these before, tonight's the night. I want you to ask your question in the comments. And remember, we can't answer every question. It's literally impossible, but we will answer as many as possible. Kyle says, will eating butter help a fast or break a fast? Yes. So I use butter strategically because butter has virtually no carbohydrates at all virtually no protein at all. And those are the two things that are going to elevate your insulin a meaningful amount. And so if I'm starting to get hungry while I'm fasting, I will put a little teaspoon of butter in my fat, in my coffee and it melts and I froth it up with a little frother. It's delicious. And that fat hacks my hunger hormones. So, and it without meaningfully raising my insulin without raising my blood sugar at all. And so it turns off my hunger. So I'm able to fast for longer. So I think using butter as a tool like that, just enough to turn off your hunger. I used to put a whole stick of butter in my coffee. Now I just put a teaspoon. That's all I need to tell my hunger hormones that I, I it's not time to eat. And so in that respect, I think it's a very powerful tool. You can do this with ghee or butter. You can do it with coconut oil if you like that. Uh, you can do it with MCT oil if you like that. You can do it with heavy cream, but be very careful. Only put a tiny splash because heavy cream does have a little uh, carbohydrate in it and a little protein. So it's going to raise your insulin a tiny amount. Too much will we'll break your fast. Miss Crystal says, do you have a cookbook recommendation? <laughs> yeah. We, we do. We got a bunch. A few. Yeah. So yeah. Kim Howerton and I wrote a holiday cookbook. I think it's still linked in the description. I think so. If not, I'll link it right after this video is over. And then Maria Emmerich, every one of her cookbooks is amazing. 100%. <clears throat> yeah. If you have a, okay. Go ahead. I'm just getting ready. <laughs> I'm getting ready. If you have a hankering for ice cream, Carrie Brown's yes. ice cream recipe She's book. got several. Yeah. I've never had better ice cream. Keto or not keto, yeah. it is the way. What is that video of us eating our ice cream? It's on, on YouTube somewhere. It's on YouTube. Rebel yeah. ain't got nothing on it. Any no. of those store-bought? No. No. Nope. Get yeah. you an ice cream maker and get Carrie Brown's ice cream book. Um, yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Go ahead. Yep. Yep. Jen Fish's uh, Five Ingredient Keto Cookbook. I think that's a wonderful one for a Christmas gift yep. um, for anybody who's new or just bored because there's so many good, easy recipes in there that are tasty yep. and uh, affordable. You don't need super special ingredients. Yep. 100% agree. Uh, and, there, and that's just, that's not all of them, but that's the ones that we've actually used and we actually uh, agree with the vast majority of the ingredients. And there's also a uh, website that has some great recipes. Oh, on well, it. yes. Um, Cooking Keto with Faith.com. That's our good friend, Melissa. <clears throat> this is from the nuts. Yeah, okay. We still do it. <laughs> <laughs> After she ate the nuts, what was it the next day? Everything she was like, crap. look at my belly. And she literally looked like she was a month and a half pregnant yeah. or two months pregnant. Yeah. Um, CookingKetoWithFaith.com. She has the chili recipe that we post Whoa. all the time. That's our go-to chili recipe. She's got meatballs. She's got sweets and treats. She's got awesome stuff. And it's all free on her blog. So check her out. Yep. Really good stuff. Um, yeah, man. Tis the season to eat some yummy treats, yeah. right? Seasonal, not daily. Hey, mom and food wants to know, will keto affect my own breast milk supply? Well, that's a great question. Let's ask someone who's currently breastfeeding. Nisha? Well, it depends. Honestly, if you spent your entire pregnancy eating just the standard American diet and then try to go back to keto right after you've had baby, it could affect your supply. That has nothing to do with keto. That has to do with a... a huge change in the way that you eat and the stress that it puts on your body. It has yep. nothing to do with nutrition wise. Um, but if you did that and you want to go back to keto, you can do that. Just do it slowly and decrease your carbs over several weeks instead of going from standard American diet to 20 grams total. So overnight, yeah, yeah lower them like 50 at a time over a few weeks and you should be fine. Get lots of salt. 
lots of electrolytes, all of them, but especially salt and drink a lot of water and nurse frequently. And if the baby is asleep, then pump because that's going to boost your supply. Breast milk is a supply and demand system. So that yep. really helps. Good advice. I love that. Nope. But like I said, I'm current. I did it and I did yeah. mostly carnivore and never had an issue. Yeah. She made plenty of milk. Whoops. This is a really good one, Richard. Is fasting safe for senior citizens? That's a great question, Richard. The fasting is a hundred percent safe for senior citizens. It's a hundred percent safe for of human for human beings of any age. The only people that should be a little careful with it is if you're a type one diabetic and you're currently on a lot of insulin. Then it's not that you can't fast. You absolutely still can fast, but you need to ease into fasting slowly as you work with your doctor to decrease your insulin usage. Now, uh, this is not medical advice. Nothing we say tonight is medical advice, but but absolutely everybody can benefit from fasting regardless of their age. You're never too old to get healthier. Heather, I see your comment, but I don't see a question. She said, I stayed up till 2 a.m. in Morocco to ask you this. Keep putting it in the comments and I'll, I'll try to catch it because I really don't actually cool? see a question from you. So put it in there again. Um, here's uh, Ange Harrison says, why do I lose so much hair on keto? Okay, Ange, I actually have a YouTube video about this, and it's a well-known phenomenon. Anytime you're on any diet and you're losing weight rapidly, there's going to be some hair loss from that. That's just known. Uh, that's been known for decades in the medical community. If, if, you're, if you just fast and don't eat anything, you're going to lose weight very rapidly you're going to lose some hair. If you calorie restrict with Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or a, a vegan diet, you're going to lose hair because you're losing weight really, really quickly. This is stressful to the body. And, and the hair is one of the very first things that your body will stop spending energy on if it thinks you're starving to death. And so any diet, you know, keto, carnivore, ketovore, plant-based, Weight Watchers, any of them, if you're losing weight rapidly, there's going to be a short period, usually weeks to months, where you're going to lose some hair. Uh, the hair, if you're eating keto, real whole one ingredient uh, keto with real food, the hair is going to come back. Tell them, tell them about that. Tell them about the hair. Look at this hair. <laughs> this is keto hair right here. Yeah. Um, hypothyroid. So I'd lost a lot of hair because of that. And then after I had the baby, I lost a lot because of postpartum hair loss. And I've had nothing but thick hair since I went keto carnivore. Uh, it is a process. Hair doesn't grow super fast and it depends sure. on your genes on how fast it, it grows. That's just something that's different for everyone. But it will grow back. It's mostly yep. temporary. Most people that stick with it see their hair get just Thick Better than it's been years. Crazy gorgeous. Yep. Yep. Of course, it also has to do with hormones, what place you are in life, if you're going to menopause. Age, There's so many gender. things yep. that can cause your hair to fall out. Yeah. But it's perfectly <laughs> normal to lose some hair when you're losing weight rapidly. That's we that's known. That's not just a keto thing. Any diet's gonna cause that while you're losing weight rapidly. But ultimately, if you're eating a whole food, real food, keto, ketovore carnivore, you're eating all the nutrition that you need to build luxurious radiant hair ultimately hair grows very slowly but i promise you when it comes back in it's going to be more beautiful than it was before okay kathy we uh have all the cookbooks that we talk about are linked over on my amazon shop page all you have to do is go to amazon.com slash shop slash nisha loves it the supplements we use are over there the books that we use are over there and several like just extra things are linked over there as well so Check those out over there, and then we'll link them in the description as well. Heather found your question, so hello from right. Morocco. Morocco. She says, I need help with keto carnivore breakfast ideas for my two- and three-year-old other than eggs. No cheap access to pork products here, bacon and sausage. I'm fighting my in-laws that bread is needed with all meals. <laughs> so you're, you're right. Bread is not needed with all meals. It's not needed with any meal. Uh, if your little one has some bread occasionally when your parents are in charge, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. But on the daily, we need to be eating some meat. So what are, if, if you're, I mean, first of all, there's a hundred different ways to cook eggs. Well, right? yeah, there's a hundred different ways to cook eggs. But also, um, there's plenty of keto breakfast ideas online, free recipes and stuff like that. I have keto waffles that have pork rinds in them. So they are getting some meat in that yep. as well. You can find that on my blog. And then um, 
don't tell your parents that they're keto waffles. Just tell them yeah, you made waffles. Yeah, they won't even probably know. See? And then you can make egg bakes, mm. eggs, casseroles. Mm -hmm. um, and, all, I mean, breakfast is whenever you break your fast. So you can have anything for breakfast as well. But yeah. I know a lot of people traditionally have breakfast yeah. in the morning. It's perfectly fine to have ground beef, minced beef. Uh, any uh, chicken uh, breakfast is not a special meal where you have to eat pancakes and syrup and orange juice and toast. That's not what breakfast has to be. That's what the big food manufacturers have trained us to believe. Feel free to suggest any recipes for Heather in the comments for breakfast that don't include pork products because traditionally we eat a lot of bacon and sausage and stuff for breakfast. Oh, so yeah. give her some ideas in the comments. Glenn wants to know, why is my energy zapped after the gym? I have plenty of fat to burn. Well, Glenn, it takes a minute for your body to, to get fat adapted, to become keto adapted. But it also, when you work out hard at the gym, think about it. It just makes common sense. You're going to be tired after that. That's not, if you, if you really bust a gut in the gym, you're not going to be rejuvenated after that. You're going to be exhausted. That's normal. Just like in the wild, if we go and chase down an a, a, a elephant and kill it and eat it, we're going to be tired after that. That's okay to be tired after you work out. That's normal. Yeah, sorry. I wasn't thinking about pork panko in Morocco. Maybe you don't have access to that, but you maybe have access to chicken skins. Mm. And if you bake chicken skins or yeah. fry them, then they act just like pork rinds. You could crush them up and then yeah. you can use that as a substitute instead yeah. of the pork pork rinds or pork panko in the waffles. Any real fermented cheese. Beckett loves cheese for breakfast. He'll he'll eat just a, a big hunk of cheese or it will melt it on something. But basically any meat, any cheese, uh, a few berries if, if you're doing keto with your little one, uh, some veg, whatever they like, you can just, they can eat that every morning and don't feel like you have to have variety in your meal. I love that Dr. Kilt said that. You don't need yeah, variety. If you're eating nutrient dense food, you can eat the same thing every day. Beckett, right now, currently, he eats sausage and bacon and hamburger, and that's pretty much it. And he, yeah, and cheese. He used to love eggs. Now he's like, man, eh, I don't want any eggs. That's fine because he's getting all the nutrition he needs in the other stuff. Yeah, but she's saying, like, kids do get bored of stuff. They're not adults. Yes, and, and so yeah. any meat, any veg, a few berries, all that stuff is fair game, and you can just rotate. When they get tired of one thing, start another. Uh, Michelle says, I can't seem to lose my last 10 to 15 pounds. I've lost 70. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Good job on Keto Carnivore three months ago, um, and, and I improved my sojourner symptoms but gained weight. Do you recommend fasting with sojourner's symptoms? Yeah, you can fast. Uh there's no problem. There's no reason you shouldn't fast. The last 10 pounds are always the hardest. For some people, it's the last 20 pounds. They're the, it's going to be very, very slow. The thing you have to keep in mind is, first of all, you've lost 70 pounds. Give it to her. Booyah. Okay. Secondly, you haven't gained any weight. And you're not going to as, as long as you're eating the proper human diet and doing some fasting. And so, yeah, some daily intermittent fasting of 16, 18, or 20 hours most days of the week perfect that's going to help you reach in and start to burn that last 10 pounds and there's no danger from intermittent fasting at all hey Brittany says sweet tooth cravings in the beginning tips to not fall off track yeah go so my tip my my overarching tip is that we're all human and every now and then we're going to mess up the, the biggest, most powerful tip of all is if you do mess up, oh my God, I just ate, fill in the blank. Do not let that get in your head. Do not be feel guilty. Do not feel defeated. Do not feel like a loser. Just say, okay, I did that one thing. That's fine. I'm right back on keto or carnivore. I'm right back on my fasting. I'm going to act like it didn't even happen. The worst thing you can possibly do is get all dejected and, and beat yourself up and then just say, well, just screw it. Forget it. I'm a loser. I'm just going to go eat all the Doritos. Don't do that. That's the thing that will mess you up for weeks or months. If you just have one meal where you, where you sin a little bit, have a little keto sin, forget it. Move on. Don't do it again and act like it never happened. My tip is fat bombs in the beginning. Those were really mm. helpful for me. There are so many recipes yeah, out there. The um, our friend Melissa, Cooking Keto with Faith, she has strawberry cheesecake ones yes. that are fantastic. And if you are craving something sweet, not only will that 
give you something sweet, but it's made mostly of fat, so it's going to curb your hunger. Right. And eat some salt, too. A lot of people feel like eating salt helps curb cravings. But have alternatives. That was key for me in the beginning. If I wanted a cookie, then I used the tools in my keto toolbox at the time, which were fat snacks cookies, or making a recipe for keto cookies. I have an cookies. alternative in reach yep. where you can grab it if you need it. Now, I'm not saying eat those every day. There are tools. Use them when you need them. And that's a good way to kind of 100%. help you stay on track while still having something sweet. Yeah, and also, Brittany, if your family will allow it, get all the junk out of your house. All the stuff that's not keto approved, literally give it to a neighbor. Give it to a food bank. Get it out of your house and your car and the office if you still go to the office and don't work remotely. Get don't So that way it's not in reach. You've got the, the, the Fat Snacks cookies right there, and there's no other alternative. So that'll do. John wants to know. Hey, John. Uh, he's from Belgium. Hello, Belgium. I want to go to Belgium. I want to go anywhere. My diet consists of different animal proteins and avocado as my only plant food. Is that enough co enough to cover all of my needs? Probably. If you're eating some liver two or three times a week, it can be chicken liver, cod liver, beef liver, doesn't matter what kind of liver. It can be goose liver pate. That plus all the, the different animal foods and a little avocado, you're going to be getting every vitamin, mineral, amino acid, and fatty acid that your body needs that you can get from food. So there's no way you're going to get all the nutrition you get from what you just described. You're never going to get that much nutrition from eating just the standard Western diet. That's never going to happen. So you're already, you've already upped your nutrition game significantly by eating the way you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, Kim. Kaima? Kaima? I don't know. I'm sorry. Will drinking water during a meal affect your nutrition absorption? I've been told to avoid drinking water while eating. This is a good question. Misha and I have actually talked about this a little lately, and I've been thinking about this. What we're trying to do with the proper human diet is mimic the way we've eaten for the last 250,000 years, right? So let's do our little mental time machine, go back in time 100,000 years. Nisha and I and our tribe have just brought down a mastodon and we have just eaten as much of this mastodon as we can hold. We don't have glasses or cups, so we didn't drink anything. We just stuffed our, our gut with this fatty meat. Uh, I don't think it's, I think it's probably not ancestrally, not that it's inappropriate, but I just don't think that we drank with meals back then. Now I do drink with meals, but I have tried since we've been discussing this, to just take little sips of liquid, just to clear my palate in case I want to change from beef to pork. I want to be able to taste the difference. But I don't think that it's probably the best to gulp and, and really chug a little liquids while you're eating because that liquid is going to dilute your stomach acid. And especially if you're eating a diet full of fatty meat, like, like I hope you are, you need your stomach acid to be as strong as possible. And it's not that the, the liquid's going to dilute your stomach acid completely because it's a very strong acid unless you're taking an acid blocker. But I do think you should probably limit the amount of liquid that you drink during a meal and just limit it to small sips. What do you think about that? Yeah, I... I... You see the logic there? I think there? that we uh, have been marketed to for beverages with meals. 100%. That seems like something that didn't really become such an important thing right. to do until like recent history. Right. Or for um, yeah. recreational purposes. Like yeah. beer and mead and wine and that sort of thing. So yeah. the food I think industry, it makes sense. Yeah. They've tried to pair mm -hmm. certain liquids with certain foods. So they can sell you the liquid too. Yeah. Uh, a good example of this is back when I was a kid, there was no such thing as a cup holder in a car. And so if you went to a rest, you know, a restaurant and you got food to go, or you went to one of the very few drive-ins, you would get food, but there was no place to put your cup holder. So you'd either have a very small cup of liquid that you could put between your legs, or you just wouldn't get any liquid at all. And I think it's, it's very, uh, I think it mirrors the way we used to eat to only take small sips of liquid or to not drink at all while you're eating. Allie says, what's your opinion on fasting and healing infections, especially bacterial infections? Yeah, good question. I think for every infection, fasting is going to help your body fight off the, the infection quicker and more completely 
uh, than if you're if you're trying to feed a fever, like like we're told. I really think I mean, every animal in the wild, if it gets sick, it stops eating. Every animal, without exception, I think that they do that for a reason because that helps their body to fight off the infection, and I think that works in your body too. Asphalt Soldier <coughs> says triglycerides, whether keto or carnivore, is about 180. Been carnivore since August. By cutting out coffee, do you think my triglycerides will go down? For, for some few people, it's the coffee or the tea. Uh, remember, coffee and tea come from plants, and coffee and tea do have a little bit of carbohydrate. You may be one of those people uh, that needs to be as close to zero carb as you can possibly get in order to get your triglycerides down and your HDL up and your A1C normal and all that stuff we talk about. I don't, that doesn't apply to everybody, but some of us, in order to have normal triglycerides, we gotta we gotta cut down or stop the coffee. Tracy says, "Can you fast while breastfeeding?" That's a good question. Let's ask someone who is breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Um, I don't think you should force yourself to fast but I also don't think you should force yourself to eat. Um, so listen to your body. Some days I eat at 10 a.m. Sometimes I don't eat till 5 p.m. I eat when I'm hungry and I eat till I'm full. And no matter when I break my fast, I still eat plenty of food. So just make sure you're eating enough food yep. if you if you do intermittent fast uh, intuitively. Yep. But if you are hungry, feed yourself so you can feed your baby. That's very important. So don't, yes. don't use fasting to try to lose weight if that's what you're going for. Don't try to do that. Just listen to your body. What's important right now is your milk supply, and you are in charge of that. You're in charge of giving your body enough energy so that it makes enough milk so that your baby has enough energy and can he can grow or she can grow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had to Google which way that was spelled by the way. Oh, okay. How was, was like, it spelled? H-E-A-R. Here, here. Here, here. Hmm. Yeah. What about Hazab? How do you spell that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Huzzah! Now, fun fact, you should really can't spell. <laughs> I'm an awful speller. Well, that's a hard word. I don't know how to spell huzzah. Oh, there's a vegan. Does anybody know? Oh, do we have a vegan? Listen, we love vegans. We we do not disrespect them. We're trying to help vegans, too. But you got to be nice. All right. Here's a question we get asked a lot from uh, Rahat. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. What micronutrient split do you recommend? Well, I recommend uh, you split all your macros between fat and protein with a carnivore diet. That's what works best for me. If you're going to do keto, then you need to worry about really one macro. Your total carbohydrate count, you want to keep that to 20 grams or lower a day, every day. So 20 total grams of carbs or less. And then if you eat high protein, and moderate fat, I don't care. You're probably still going to benefit. If you eat high fat, moderate protein, I don't care. You're probably still going to benefit. You get to pick those other two macros. You can make them as high as you want, but keep your total carbs 20 grams or less a day. Usually, though, we recommend a one-to-one -one fat to protein ratio, and we encourage that to be together. So yep. fatty cuts of meat like Brisket, mm. ribs, mm. ribeyes. Mm. Um, if you're going to eat chicken, chicken thighs, mm. and cook all of that in animal fat, that's yes. just how we have seen the most success. It works so good, and it tastes so good. It's delicious. Mm. We, we used to use MCT oil. We don't really use that anymore. Yeah. I don't think it's magical. I feel like it gets a lot of whoop, whoop, and it's like. Eh. Well, you can market it and sell it, you know. It's and expensive. So, yeah, it's very expensive. <laughs> I think that MCT oil wishes it were bacon grease. That's what I think. Yeah. Huzzah. Everybody Huzzah. tell me how to spell it. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all look so healthy. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Jose says no canola oil. No, Jose. No. no canola oil. No soybean oil. No sunflower oil. No safflower oil. No, no peanut, peanut oil. oil. None of those oils are natural oils that human beings have eaten. Most of those oils, we've only been tricked into eating for the last 50 to 100 years. Before, about 100 years ago, the first one was cottonseed oil that we were tricked into eating uh, that Crisco came out with. So yeah, avoid all those. Eat real fats that human beings could get in their, their food environment thousands of years ago. And so any animal fat, uh, avocado oil, uh, uh, what did I say? Avocado, olive, and coconut oil. Those are fats that you can actually take those fruits and make that fat on your stove. 
or over your campfire. You can render that stuff there. If you can't make it with a campfire or your, your stove or oven in, at your home, you don't need to be eating it. Um, Amy Gossett. Hey, Amy wants to know is red meat inflammatory. This is another thing that gets asked a lot because it's what we've been told for yep. years yep. now. We've been, we've been hearing this for a couple of decades now. The problem is, is it's just not true. There's actually been research done on this. Uh, when they check the inflammatory markers of cultures that eat mostly fatty meat, they have no inflammation in, your, in their body at all. It's only when you add sugar with the fat, when you add grains with the fat, and when you add the vegetable oils that we talked about earlier, when you add those things with, with natural fats, then you start to get inflammation. That doesn't mean it's the meat. It doesn't mean it's the fat. It means it's the other crap that you're eating with the meat. So when you eat that hamburger, it's not the meat causing inflammation. It's the bun and the fries and the, and the sugary ketchup and the soft drink you're having with the meat. Uh, the vegans would very much like for you not to know that truth because they believe that a plant-based diet is the most, most ethical and moral diet. I don't think they know that truth. Is well, I think the leaders of the vegan movement absolutely okay. know that truth. But the, just the average vegan on the street, they believe that meat is inflammatory. I had somebody comment on the live with Dr. Fung that it takes 18 hours to digest meat. In your, did you say no, that? it was 72 hours. 72 hours, yeah. <laughs> and and any, anybody who understands human physiology knows that's foolishness. Meat is digested within an hour or two of you eating it. If any of you guys have ever pooped out any evidence food, is that a thing that other people say, or is that just a southern thing? Like if what? you poop out, if you poop, if you look in the toilet and go, oh, there, look, there's some a food product. It's always corn, or it's always a piece of broccoli, or it's always it's never meat. And I defy anybody watching this live. Have you ever pooped out a piece of meat? No. Beckett Berry is he's very he does not chew his food thirty times. Okay. <laughs> He, he chews like he's like a dog three times and then he's like and swallows it. OK, have you ever seen a piece of meat in his poop? No. What have you seen in his poop nuts. out of the cheese? That's right. Nuts. It's, <laughs> it's always plant food that you're going to see could go all the way through your your uh, digestive tract. It's never meat. Never will you poop out a hunk of pork chop unless you eat the bone. OK, I, I've okay. said poop enough. Okay. I'm getting the poop tap. <laughs> I've said it enough. Down. But it's very important to understand this. That's just not true. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. One, two, three. Five. Do your breathing exercises. Okay. Um, this isn't a question, but I wanted to share Roxanne's story. Uh, she said, guys, I used to be a vegetarian. I'm not proud until I met a girl who convinced me to try keto. Go order a bacon cheeseburger with no bun and go from there. I'm healthier now at 34 since maybe 16 years old. 100%. Thank you for sharing that, Roxanne. And I promise you guys, we are not anti-vegan. We're not, we don't attack vegans. I really want to reach out to vegans. I actually did a live with a, well, a young lady who was a concert celloist or violinist? violinist? Violinist who was a vegan, was getting very unhealthy, having terrible skin issues. She went carnivore, and now she's, she is a new transformed person. I love that story. And, and what you don't ever see is somebody who's a carnivore who then goes vegan. You never see that. If they do, they don't do it for long because you don't feel as good. Uh, Lindley. It's a pretty name. Lindley. Uh, like Lindley that. says, uh, my wife has alpha gal allergy to all mammal meat. What would you recommend for her to get complete nutrition on keto carnivore? Yeah. This is becoming like well, such it's, a common thing. It's like, very it's common in the, me sad. in the media. It's actually quite rare in just Well, people. we get questions well, frequently that's, about Yeah, that's this. true. So you're going to focus on non-mammalian meat. You're going to focus on any kind of poultry and any kind of seafood, mm -hmm. fish, crustacean, mm -hmm. shellfish. Those are complete sources of nutrition. Most people do the best with ruminant meat, which is red meat, uh, but you don't have to eat red meat. Most people with alpha-gal can also eat pork and it doesn't really bother them. It's just red meat or ruminant meat. And it's only temporary, Lindley. It's only going to last for a few weeks or a few months. And so every every so often you need to retry a little bit of, of red meat to see if, if that's gone because that's not going to be permanent. I'm still triggered. I'm, over the well, I was fixing to read you a comment. <laughs> My boys on roll. Don't stop it. <laughs> They'll never stop if someone doesn't stop. put the brakes on no. over here. 
All right. Uh, Nassim says complex carbs versus carbs for keto. Yeah. So the only difference between complex carbs and simple carbs, Nassim, is the rapidity with which they're digested. So if you eat the highly processed carbs in a jelly donut, highly processed, your blood sugar is going to spike immediately. OK, because that's a simple carb. That's just flour and sugar. Now, if you eat some, a, a big, huge bowl of ripe blueberries or strawberries, those are complex carbs. They're mixed in with fiber. They're locked in with the fiber. And so you're still going to have the same blood sugar spike if you eat the same amount of carbohydrates. But it's going to be a slower spike and it's going to take longer. Uh, complex carbs are absolutely less bad than simple carbs, but they're still carbs. They're all carbs. Somebody said carbs are life. They may feel like they are yeah. life, but they yeah. are anti-life. They are. And it's just like an alcoholic saying that vodka is life. They, they believe that currently. Good. They taste good going down, but if yeah. you take them out, you won't believe the difference 100%. of how you feel. So true. Like you will, if you go back, you'll miss the way that you felt yep. when you weren't you eating carbs. Yeah, I promise you carbs are not life. They just feel like they are. They tricked you. Yeah. I did a reel on Instagram that was, if you guys watched Hamilton, the musical, uh, the king says, you'll be back. And I did that about keto because every time you fall off, you're like, dang it. I need to just, I need to just I feel go like back. I, I need to go back. I don't know why I did that. Yep. Because so you always come back. And as long as you come back, you know, that's what's important. Don't beat yourself up. 100%. Just saying. Just saying. Don't. Beat yourself up. Natalie. Hey, Natalie. Hey, Natalie. Carbs are so addictive. They um, are addictive. I'm yes. glad you said that. And let's talk about that for just a second because our good friend, Dr. Robert Silas, who has a YouTube channel as well, if you are an addicted to carbs, yeah. it's it's okay. A lot of people are. It's yes. a thing. Uh, and he has so many videos on how to get a grip on that yep. and get on that keto wagon yep. and stay on that keto wagon and yep. not become a victim of what's up in here. Absolutely. His handle on you, he, he's Dr. Robert Sivis, and it's C-Y-W-E-S, and he's called the Carb Addiction Doc on YouTube, and he can really help you out. The first thing you got to do, as Natalie will tell you, is you got to just admit, I'm a, I'm a carb addict, yeah. and once you do that, then you understand the power that these carbohydrates have over you. They'll even make you say such things as, carbs are life. Right. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. What? Are you done? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, if you don't know, ask yourself, can I eat one of these cookies? Yeah. Any cookie. Or can I eat five potato chips? If you can't, it is a high possibility that you are, in fact, addicted to carbs. Yep. And that's not a character flaw. That's just right. something that has happened. And it's not your fault. But it is yeah. your problem, like this one says all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. When you're when 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 a carnivore gets hungry, we're like, mm, I'm hungry. We go to the fridge, we get out some meat, we cook it, maybe plus or minus cook it, and we eat it, and that's it. Never do you find us scrounging through the fridge like some kind of madman, like, oh my god, I'm jonesing for a ribeye. We never do that. But when you have carb addiction, you will find yourself digging to the back of the pantry, looking for some kind of little carb. Thinking maybe I maybe I didn't throw the 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 remember those cookies maybe they're still back there. Look, if you've ever dug a piece of cake out of the garbage can, you're a car you're a car addict, hundred percent. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying that as a judgment. I'm yeah. saying that as someone yeah. who who yeah, if, like that's happened to people I know. Hundred <laughs> percent. If if after a dinner party or a family dinner, you notice somebody didn't finish their cake, and you're like, oh, I'll clear the dishes, and then you eat that damn piece of cake that's already been bit on. You're a carb addict and it's okay. We love you. You should love yourself. Just admit it. I'm a carb addict. I need to work on this. And Dr. Robert Sivas will help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. Lady Jane wants you to talk about poop some more. So we're going <laughs> to indulge her. Okay. Uh, Lady Jane says, Dr. Berry, when you had constipation, what did you do? Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I've never really suffered from that. I have always uh, pooped like a champ. Uh, but what you'll notice is as, as you move from the standard American diet full of fiber and full of junk towards carnivore, I mean, towards keto, ketovore, carnivore, you're going to poop less. And a lot of people, they mistake, oh, I don't, I'm not pooping as much as I used to, the volume, the amount, the times a day. 
They think that's constipation. That's not constipation. Constipation is when you're having pain and you've got to poop, but the poop won't come out and you're having, you have to strain and it hurts. You might even bleed. Those are signs of real constipation. Just the fact that you haven't pooped yet today, that's not constipation. Okay. It's very common for somebody who eats only meat to poop once a day or once every other day. They, and it's just a very small amount of poop because meat is 100% nutrition. There's almost no waste in meat like there is in vegetables and, and fruits and, and bre breads and grains. If you eat a lot of grain, you're going to poop a lot. We should have a poop counter up here. This I time. know. Ding, I'm over here. Ding. Ding. Yeah. And then also I need to start saying like you did in your – is that video still posted somewhere? Video. Like you're, like you're going to poop. It's on Facebook. Oh, you got to go back on her Facebook page and watch that. It's a labor delivery <laughs> yeah, meme. It's hilarious. Like you're pooping. That's so funny. Good times. <laughs> I was blonde then. You should repost that. Like platinum blonde. You should repost it. Um, okay, so Joanna has fessed up, and we're going to give her a shout out for that. Yes. Joanna says, guilty as charged. I've eaten stale cake to get that fixed. Absolutely. Let's have a come to keto. So have I. Come to keto meeting. All right. We're going to call it that instead of come to Jesus. Meeting. We're going to have a come to keto meeting. <laughs> yep. And if this has happened to you and you've had something, we're going to put it in the comments so you know you're not alone because yes. you're not alone. Yeah. This everybody fess up right now. Fess up so that all the carb addicts can understand you're in good company here. Yeah. Let's talk to Dr. Barry. I've what? got a confession. I, I know. I've got a confession. Okay. Let's hear it. Back when I was eating crap. I would have the Berry Girls, right? When they were when they were in their their you know 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old stage. If they were if we were eating cookies or something, I would catch them not looking and I would hide the rest of the pack of cookies so that I could eat those later. I've done that more than once. Yeah. And so I would literally take food out of my children's mouth so that I could have some cookies later on with my milk later that night. You got a carb confession? Um, let me think. It was, I was always, uh, potato chips. That was my thing. You're more of a savory. I'm a salty, savory person. person. Yeah. So I would, um, because I lived with my parents while I was going, um, to nursing school and my dad also, he was a very big car back addict. Yeah. I, I didn't ever have that much of a problem, but I mean, I would hide my food from him so that I would be able to eat it. <laughs> And he wouldn't eat it because if he, if yep. I left it with him, because he's carbetic 100%, it would be gone. Yep. It would be gone. And you know, one, one very important point about that, the carbs don't have to be sweet for you to be a carb addict. You can be a carb addict with Cheetos and Doritos and potato chips just as much and just as powerfully as you can be a carb addict with uh, powdered, powdered uh, lemon jelly donuts, which used to be my crack. Yeah. Yeah. Shira says, oh, so many confessions. Yes, yes because it's, you're not alone. It's Read not. through these confessions, guys. Don't it's, feel it, bad. Don't beat yourself up. Just admit it and go watch Carb Addiction Doc. And then together, we can all fix this carb addiction. And the big food corporations who capitalize on our carb addiction can suck it. Susan says, I can't take just one bite. That right. one sentence right there, if you can say that about yep. yourself and, and be serious and know that about yourself, it will save you. Yes. Because if you know that, then that first bite should never happen. Yep. Because you know that that's like the first drink for an alcoholic who's who's been sober for six months. Should they take, oh, I'm just going to have one drink. It's okay. Just a bite. Just right. one drink. Yeah. No, you are an alcoholic. You can't take that first drink. So now you know, Susan. Yeah, pizza, that was another thing. I would, man, I could eat a whole pizza by myself. Yeah. Oh, I would do that after the girls because they didn't like the crust or whatever. I would I would round up all the leftovers and I would just sit there and watch whatever and just binge on the, yeah. Yeah, I've done yeah. that before. Dr. Berry, he used to just. Hey, he I was, was fast. He was a um, grazer. Yes, constant, I, ate all day long, every day. Yeah. Yep. But he was paleo. Yeah. <laughs> Paleo did not work for either one of us. No, so no, I think it maybe helped my inflammation a little, but yeah. I was eating so many carbs. Here's the thing. Here's another. Somebody said uh, I can't find it, but somebody said it's worse than cigarettes, and because they don't, no one says that it's a thing. So right, like, right. You see someone smoking, people, they they know it's unhealthy, and you people know will it's judge unhealthy. you, and they'll say something, and they'll like look well, and at you. You can't even argue with them. They're like, you need to quit smoking. Yeah. <sighs> I do. You know I what I mean? That's pain. not something you can argue with. But if somebody tells you, 
you don't need to eat that donut. Well, then you're you're being judged, right? And they're being mean, and da 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 da. Like because yeah. it's it's such a common thing that we're just so used to everybody eating that kind of stuff <laughs> that it can't possibly be bad for. I us. think yeah, that was a very important point you made. It comes across differently. If I say, "Oh my God, you shouldn't smoke cigarettes; they're bad for you," the smoker agrees with you. But many people who are addicted to carbohydrates, if you say you shouldn't eat that jelly donut, that's bad for you. They feel like you're being mean. You're being hurtful. It's like, no, this is food, damn it. I bought it at the grocery store. It's okay for me to eat this. Stop being mean to me and judging me. But it's just as bad for you as the cigarette. Another thing is moderation. No one, no one um, is smoking cigarettes in moderation and thinking that somehow that's okay. But moderation is a word that gets thrown around a lot with carbs. Moderation isn't even, like, tell me what that exactly means. What does that no. mean exactly? There's not a true definition of what moderation means. What, once a week, once a month, once a year? Just snorting one line of cocaine. Is that moderation? Just stopping at one line? Yeah. No, it's bad for you. You shouldn't do it at all. It just, yeah. The lines have gotten very blurry when it comes yeah. to the effects that food has on us unless you're a vegan then you know it's right all and there are some very rich corporations who their profit motive depends on tricking you into thinking that those carbs are okay to eat yeah and i think one day one day it will be known that you know the sugar thing it's coming people are learning sugar is bad and it doesn't ma yep. matter if it's from a donut or from whole wheat rice it affects yep. your insulin hyperinsulinemia causes problems very severe problems and it Absolutely. is known it will be known there's already one country in the world that has a warning uh in sri lanka their diabetes association had on if you get a little pack of sugar in their restaurants it says may lead to diabetes and obesity and so there's already one country on board with this. It's just going to take more of us speaking up, being honest, and admitting, hey, I'm a carb addict. Uh, the more we do that, the more it's going to help other people. It's going to give them power over this addiction to say, you know what? I may be a carb addict too. I need to check into that. I need to try to go carb free for a week and see what happens. Are hey, you, baby? He just wants down. He wants to play. I'm going to throw you. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Beckett. What if I, I, I'm Keto a, baby. Keto baby. Stand right here. Let me tickle your belly. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my hi, Hemi says, after two years following you guys, my biggest takeaway is eat to live, not live to eat. Absolutely. And there are so many of us who... We live to eat. That is the biggest pleasure of our day. Now, that's another great way to know if you're a carb addict. If eating is the biggest pleasure of your day, most days of the week, that's not healthy. That's not normal. There should be other pleasures in your life that, that eclipse the pleasure you get from eating. I enjoy eating a ribeye, but I would much rather play with this guy if I had a chance. These are the pleasures of my life, not the food that I eat that I can't wait to get back in there and eat as soon as this life is over. That's a huge sign you might be a carb addict. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> where's, my, where's my eye? Eye? Where's my eye? That's not my eye. <laughs> <laughs> your headlights. Where's my nose, baby? Where's my nose? Good baby. Where's my ear? Where's my ear? Yeah. yeah good job. Where's my where's my hair? Do you know that one? That's your yeah. hair. Yeah. Good he job, does. baby. Yeah. He he knows way more words than he says. He's kind of shy about saying words. Man, he knows what they mean. He knows mean. over ten words. He talks he talks pretty good for a one year old, I think. Okay, you can be down. You want to go back to lovey? Come on. Turn that baby out. Let's see if we've got another good question here. Find us another good one, baby. Thanks so much good. for the comments, guys. You guys are amazing. Yes. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for the stars on Facebook and, and the super, super chats. Chat. Absolutely. Thank you guys for that. Whew. I'm all worked up. Shelby says, one thing you said earlier that I'm going to remind myself daily, it's not your fault, but it is your problem. 100%. He said that two yeah. or three years ago, and I was like, that is yeah. gold. Yeah. That is gold because 
most of this isn't our fault. We've been told things by yep. experts, people who should know. Yep. And well, how are we supposed to know that they were wrong? How are we supposed to know that? You, we couldn't. You couldn't know. But that's why we do this every Monday night at 7 p.m. is so we can help you learn. And then you won't be fooled again because you know. Yep. Uh, Toronto says, thank you for Dr. Funk interview. He's from a hometown in Toronto. If you guys didn't watch that, the interview with the, those two was really, really good. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Why does your caduceus have eyes? It's the snakes. It's the, the snakes, snakes have eyes. See the snakes? Uh, Amber says, I do not miss carb coma after eating. Yeah, man. Yeah. I used to have the biggest carb coma. And I would always lay down and try to watch a YouTube video or try to listen to a book. I was asleep in five minutes. Oh, crap. Um, sorry. Where is the interview? It's here on YouTube or on Facebook, either yeah. one. Or on Twitter. You can oh. find it all three places. Just look for Dr. Barry, Dr. Fung, and you'll find it. Um. Jennifer wants to know, what do you eat in a day? Well, let's just talk about today. What have I eaten today? Nothing, I don't think. Have I eaten today? <laughs> I don't think so. Did you, oh, you ate steak. Yeah, I had. Oh, had yeah, yeah. I had two thin ribeyes. They yeah. weren't thick. Yeah. I had two ribeyes, and then I had a big uh, slice of beef liver, and I put some mustard on my beef liver because I, I like beef liver, but I don't love it. So I put a little mustard on it, zero carb mustard, and that and that helps me to get it down. Lost a lot of salt, but did, have I eaten anything else? Oh, I ate uh, a bite of the little uh, chocolate nut things that that oh, Melissa made. I had a bite of one of those, and that's all I've eaten today. Yeah. In December, we give ourselves a little yeah. grace to eat keto yeah. treats where we wouldn't. This is normally. a festival month. We're yeah. celebrating. Yeah, but Something. we don't do it every day, and we no, don't do it all day. No. Yeah, but on a usual day, I, if I were going to eat a second meal, I would not have eaten that little uh, chocolatey, nutty thing. I would have eaten some more meat. Yeah. Uh, Tice says, does liverwurst count as eating liver? Liverwurst does. Um, uh, liver cheese does. Liver pate. Cod liver. You can make the most amazing liver mousse or liver pate with cod liver. Uh, I like to just mix it with salt and mustard. It's freaking delicious. Hey, Cody. Uh, she wants to know, do you do vitamin D drops for Beckett? That's she an is, excellent question. Yeah. Uh, she's breastfeeding her 17-month-old, yeah. and she takes a vitamin supplement as well. Yeah. Her baby loves me, too. Yeah. If you're not taking, if you're not getting about 6,400 IUs of vitamin D a day, and you're exclusively oh. breastfeeding, then you do need to give your baby vitamin D drops. Uh, but a study has proven this. This is known. We've got a YouTube video about it. If you'll get 6,400 international units of vitamin D3 a day, a woman's going to make all the vitamin D in her breast milk that her baby needs. 100%. Yeah. So, so Nisha takes her vitamin D or gets it in the sun or gets it from the vitamin D rich foods that I talk about in my YouTube video. And then if she needs a supplement, she takes it and Becky gets all the vitamin D he needs from her breast milk. Okay. Uh, I've seen this a few times asking about carb blockers for cheat meals. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, already, I mean, I don't know what your opinion is, but what is your opinion? <laughs> the carb blockers are crap. They do. There, you cannot block the physiology of the human. What does it do? Does it make you just crap? Well, no. I see the the fat blockers like Olesta. They will make you crap your pants. Yeah. The carb blockers are just, mm. it's baloney. I'm sorry. That, no, that's it's a waste. A gimmick. It's a total gimmick. You wasted your money. Yeah. Sorry. It sounds so good, doesn't it? It would it be awesome. So good. would be awesome, but no. I mean, if they worked that good, wouldn't we all be on them? Right. And we'd all be skinny. Yeah. Uh, Skeeter. Hey, Skeeter. I love that name. Uh, Skeeter says, I started carnivore six days ago. My psoriasis is already clearing up. First three days yep. were murder. I'm a truck driver and my energy and focus is so much higher now. Yep. Way to go, Skeeter. Do you know how many guys were called Skeeter when I was growing up in Hornwall, Tennessee? <laughs> we had a bunch of Skeeters and Scooters and Pumpkins, and I loved them all. They were all my friends. We went to the river. We shot guns. We drank beer. It was great. Do you I have loved... any Weezers? No Weezer. Weezer? No, no Weezer. you watched them Magnolias, you know. <laughs> you know. Good job, Skeeter. Keep it up. And, and Skeeter, share your story. There's so, you know, I don't have to tell you, there's so many morbidly obese diabetic truck drivers in the world. You can help those guys. 
to not be as miserable as you know they are. I think there's a really good keto trucker Facebook group. Yep, I can't. It's keto. If you just look for keto it. trucker, I think you'll find it on Facebook. Yeah. It's a great group. A lot of bubbas. Yeah, a lot of bubbas. A lot of bubbas. Yeah, I had a bubba or so two. So many bubbas. Heck yeah. Bubba one, bubba two. Yeah, yeah. famous last words in Hornwall growing up were, hey, bubba, watch this. It's bad every time. Classic. Uh, let's see. Oh, my voice is screechy. Well, I'm very sorry. There's not a whole lot I can do about my voice. God gave it to me. It's screechy? Yeah. Uh, guns fine. and Loaded says you saved my life. 135 pounds. Boom. Boom. I love That's it. Awesome. That is awesome. Now it's your job to save the life of every friend and family member that you care about. Because you know the truth now. Now it's your time to tell the truth. Uh, all right. I've seen this. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I've seen this question a few times. I think we have a few new people in here. Yep. Keto without a gallbladder. This is something we get asked constantly. Yeah. You absolutely can do keto without a gallbladder and benefit tremendously from keto without a gallbladder. I've got a YouTube video just about that. Just go to YouTube and search for Dr. Barry Keto Gallbladder. You can watch the whole video. You may have to come at keto a little slower. You may not be able to transition overnight like some people with a gallbladder could do, but you just transition over a few weeks and you can enjoy all the benefits of keto, even if you don't have a gallbladder, even if you don't have one kidney, even if you don't have a thyroid gland. And literally, there's no body part that we can take off of you that you won't still benefit from keto. Uh, precision. Well, why does it keep? I hate your laptop. Uh, precision tub technologies. I bet you do videos. That is a very professional name. Beth is really interested in Nisha's daily supplements. We're patrons. Thank you. Hey, thank you, guys. Hair, nails, all, etc. Actually, I'm fixing to do a what I ate in a day supplements video. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go check it out because I'll show you every single supplement that I take. When I take them, how much I take, why I take, and all that stuff. So yeah. that's be that's coming up on the. We don't YouTube take channel. many, but she takes a few, and she you're yeah. going to share it coming up in the next yeah. week or two. Yeah. Thanks for your support. Yes, uh, Helen has a non-scale victory. No more chronic sinusitis. Yes, that's a big deal. That's a big deal if you've ever had chronic yeah. sinusitis. That's a big deal. Um. Oops. Beach Hound says, can carnivore help someone with an essential trimmer? Maybe. Here's the thing about essential trimmers. Everybody has one, every human on the planet. But usually when you're younger and healthier and not uh, anxious, you can't notice your trimmer. OK, but if you get tired, if you get anxious, if you get mad, uh, you might notice your trimmer. And as you get older, the trimmer becomes more noticeable. Now, in some people, their essential trimmer can be quite severe. So keto or carnivore might make it less severe. In other words, it won't be as noticeable. It'll be a, a smaller trimmer. But if you if you have that, 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 that's something we all have. But you may still, you, you may not, your trimmer may not go away. It may just get less noticeable. Trimmer, not trimmer. 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 Uh, Johnny. <coughs> Johnny. Yeah. Yes. Papa, you're supposed to do it. <laughs> I don't know that. Eating sugar. Oh, no, Coco Mel. Yeah. Mm. We watched too much Coco Mel. I didn't know his name was Johnny. Uh, I've heard some doctors say that fat causes fatty liver. And then if I do keto, I need to offset it with vegetables. Is this true? I probably have fatty liver. Yeah, that's totally false. And uh, I know who you're talking about. I have a lot of respect for the guy. But in this, in this one thing, he's just wrong. OK, I've got several videos on my YouTube channel about fatty liver and how to reverse it completely within just a few weeks. Go check out those videos. Eating fat does not cause fatty liver. Eating simple processed carbs, that's what causes the majority of fatty liver. Alcohol can also cause fatty liver. So if you've got fatty liver, stop the alcohol, stop the sugars, stop the grains, stop the vegetable oils and eat keto, ketovore, or carnivore, and your fatty liver will be gone within a few weeks. Monkey Shredder <clears throat> says, carnivore for going on six months from 290 <clears throat> to present at 226, and type 2, and high blood pressure free. Boom! Thank you. You saved my life, Dr. Barry. You saved your life. You saved your life. Now go. it's your job to help a relative or help a friend, because now you know the secret. 
you're you're smarter than the average doctor when it comes to human nutrition. So go out and, and share what you know. Yep. All right, guys. That is our time. It's been a good one. It's a good hour. You rocked that. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you did haven't gotten enough of us tonight, we'll be live tomorrow night at 6 p.m. every Tuesday in our private Facebook group. The way you get in that group, if you're interested, is to become a patron on patreon.com or to become a Facebook supporter. And if you want to, if you if you want even more of us, then you get that every Tuesday night by being in our private Facebook group. And your small donation helps us spend more time and more resources to help more people. Because I'm sick and damn tired of there being an epidemic of obesity, type two diabetes, fatty liver, hypertension. I'm sick and tired of that crap. I'm ready to fix it. And with your help, I sure the hell am going to fix it. Everything you do is helpful. You don't have to be a patron. You don't have to send super chats. Right. Chats, hitting the thumb, sharing this video, and commenting are all awesome Absolutely. ways for you to share. You don't have to spend any money yes. to do that. And we appreciate that. We're grateful so much, for especially all of sharing that. and subscribing yep. and liking and following and all the things that you do on the social yeah. media. Yeah. yeah, we're so grateful that you've been part of this journey with us and we ain't ever going to stop. And I hope you don't stop either. Screech. We will see you next Monday. Same place, same time. Don't be late. It's a date. It's a date. Don't be late. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us. See you next week. See you guys. Bye.